Hello everybody and welcome to my new series, Oxen Vexillology, where I talk about a state's flag and its history. In case you didn't know, vexillology is the study of history, symbolism, and the usage of flags. Today on my first episode, I'm going to talk about Alabama's flag, which you can see is right behind me. First off, let's talk about the history. On January 11, 1861, the Alabama Convention on Separation passed a resolution designating an official flag which was designed by several women from Montgomery, and final touches were done by a woman named Frances Cora. One side of the flag showed the goddess of freedom holding an unsheathed sword in her right hand. To her left, she held a small blue flag with a gold star. Above the gold star was the text Alabama in all capital letters. In one arch above this figure were the words independent, now, and forever. At the back of the flag was a cotton plant with a coiled rattlesnake. The text Noli me tangere, which is Latin for touch me not, was placed under the cotton plant. The flag was flown until February 10, 1861, and was taken to the governor's office after being damaged by severe weather. It never flew again after that. The current Alabama flag was adopted in 1895. Alabama approved their flag design five years ago before Florida. But Florida created their flag first, which displayed a white flag with a red cross, similar to the current Florida flag with a burgundy cross and the state seal at the center. Now let's move on to... The Alabama flag is known to have a simple design of the St. Andrew's cross. A cross in vexillology is known as a saltire. The cross of St. Andrew represents the cross on which St. Andrew was crucified. St. Andrew was an apostle of Jesus Christ. The design of this flag is believed to have been inspired by the saltire found on the Confederate battle flag. Some also think that the flag is inspired by the flag carried by the 7th Alabama Cavalry, which also contains a red saltire. Some believe that the saltire in commemoration of Alabama's contribution to the Confederacy, since its adoption was during the promotion of the Jim Crow laws and segregation. Now, let's see who made the flag and why. The creator of the flag was a man by the name of John William Augustine Sanford, Jr. John Sanford was a lawyer, the Alabama Supreme Court clerk, and the Attorney General of Alabama for three terms. He was born in Midgeville, Georgia. Sanford Jr. graduated from Oglethorpe University on November 3, 1844, with a BA from Harvard University in 1851, with a BL, and from the University of Alabama in 1878 with an LLD. He was admitted to the bar on October 19, 1852. He was a Democrat and supported secession after Abraham Lincoln's election as president. He was served as an officer in the Confederate Army. On March 7, 1860, in Montgomery, he married a woman named Sally Maria Taylor, daughter of Colonel William H. Taylor. They had a daughter named Boleyne and a son named John W. A. Sanford III. That was it for Alabama. Thank you for watching the first episode of my new series. See you next time and have an awesome day. Stay tuned, Alaska is coming up next.